Google's axed the Pixel 3 from further updates exactly three years after its launch, ditching it at Android 12 with a security patch from October of 2021. And while Android app compatibility is so diverse, it won't experience incompatible apps for many years, it's slowly falling more vulnerable with an outdated security patch. But what some Android phones like the Pixel have is an unlockable bootloader. And with the use of community-driven software, you can take control of your phone and update it past whatever the manufacturer says it can run. For this Pixel 3, we'll be installing Pixel Dust, which is a custom ROM based on Android 13. Along with the ROM, I'll need a copy of the latest stock factory image, which is available from Google. Additionally, I'll also need both a zip and image of TWRP for the Pixel 3 blue line. But of course, none of these files are of any use if I can't flash them to the phone. For that, I'll be using Google's platform tools SDK. Once everything's downloaded, I can put them in separate folders to make this a bit easier to follow. The most crucial step in this process was of course not explicitly stated in the ROMs installation guide, which left me confused when none of the commands worked. But that was because I needed to install Google's platform tools first. To do this, I can open a new finder window in the slash etc directory. This is where I'll place the platform tools folder which contains the executables like ADB that we'll use later in terminal. But we still need to tell the computer that there are commands in that folder. To do that, I'll need to add the file path into the pass file. macOS won't let me edit it in place, so I'll need to move it to the desktop first, edit the file, and replace the original in the etc folder. Typing the word adb into the terminal app, you can see we no longer get an error. Next, we need to get the phone ready. I'll navigate into the about page in settings and enable the hidden developer options by tapping repetitively on the build number. If you've ever wanted to be a developer, congratulations, you've just found the easy and guaranteed shortcut to success. In these developer options, I'll need to enable OEM unlocking to allow the bootloader to be unlocked, and the USB debugging option to allow the computer to execute commands on the phone. With the phone plugged into my computer, we can begin the flash. In terminal, I'll tell ADB to reboot the phone to the bootloader. Here we can see it's still locked. To unlock it, I'll type fastboot, flashing unlock. The phone will now show a different screen where I'll need to approve the unlock of the bootloader. Now we can see the phone is unlocked and ready for non-Google approved software. Despite this, we'll first flash the latest official software. Why? I don't know, but it was the only thing in the install guide that was in all caps, so I guess it's important. Once I've changed into the directory for the firmware, Google's official flash guide says to type flash all, but that didn't work for me, so I just dragged the flash all.sh file into terminal. If you're using Windows, you'd use the .bat file instead, as these are script files that automate the restore process. In case it wasn't obvious, this will wipe all data, including apps and photos. Be sure not to enable a password or Google account while setting up the phone. But back in the OS, we can re-enable developer options and USB debugging. Back at the computer, we can now load TWRP. I renamed it to make it easier to type and moved it into the platform tools folder. I can now tell Fastboot to boot to the TWRP image. Little did I know at the time, but this didn't work as I hadn't changed directories into the platform tools folder. But dragging the file in worked too. And within a couple of seconds, we booted up into TeamWin's TWRP software. Inside this custom recovery mode, I can format the data from the wipe menu. After a few seconds, it's done and the phone is ready for the new ROM, which I'll need to copy across. As always, Android file transfer was a complete letdown in making this happen, saying MTP mode wasn't enabled when it was, failing to copy the file, and just crashing. So I copied the ROM and the TWRP zip file to a USB drive instead. Now we're ready to go. In the install section, I can select the Pixel Dust Android 13 ROM before adding TWRP through the Add More Zips menu, being sure to select the files without the period and underscore at the beginning. Now all that's left to do is swipe to flash. Once it's done, I can reboot the phone into the system. 
On boot, we can see the new animation, indicating everything was successful. After setup, we can see that in settings, the phone is now running Android 13 with the October 2022 security patch update. A whole year newer than it was before. So this is it. A Pixel 3 hacked to live on with a more up-to-date operating system. It's disappointing Google stopped offering security updates for the Pixel 3, despite still releasing security updates for Android 12 as a whole. But Google's open approach to allowing custom operating systems and repair means you don't have to rely on them. It's your phone, so you can just install something else. And with most of Android being open source, it allows people to make these updates for unsupported devices. However, it isn't without its downsides. The bootloader has to remain unlocked, otherwise the phone will brick the OS, as it would detect it's not Google's official Pixel operating system. After all, that's the purpose of a locked bootloader. This does mean you'll get a warning message on boot about software integrity. You have to trust the software you're installing. And while I installed Pixel Dust in this video, I have not checked into its legitimacy nor endorse its use. But its source code is available, so do your own research before installing it. Additionally, over-the-air software updates are not a part of this specific ROM, meaning if a new version is released, you have to boot into recovery mode and update that way. This does complicate things and come with added risks, so I would advise backing up your data regularly. But even without updating the phone further, it's still more up to date than Google's offering. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Repair Tips playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.